Hello, I'm your host, April Davidson, and here your show is Valley Varieties. I have Hal Rains with us today. Hey, guys. Hi, and we have some pottery in front of us. This is stuff that you have made over a period of time, and it's all very gorgeous looking. I would like to eventually, in the show, hold it up so that the viewers can see it. Um, we're also going to look at some videos that you have, and um, there's going to be plenty of time to do that. So what is it that got you into pottery? Well, pottery, um, it, I guess in a way it's like, uh, well, with a lot of kids, they go, you know, they're real, re sorry, with a lot of students, maybe they're not as gifted uh, academically as some of their peers. Well, I was one of those kids who think I did well academically, but I didn't want to work really hard in every class, so I wanted to take a goof-off class. <laughs> Understandable. Okay. And that's and kind of where I was, you know, in, in my high school time. So I started, uh, I guess, a, a, I'm sorry, a pottery uh, pursuit in high school just because there were a lot of girls in the class. and. I, I wanted to go there and just basically spend some time talking and uh, flirting rather than working. <laughs> so you did it for the ladies. I did do it for the ladies, <laughs> yes. To be honest, yes. And so you actually found out that you had a little um, bit of a talent for it. Well, the talent, yeah, I kind of let all that go, you know, for many, many years. And in fact, I lived a Boy, I went to college and did you know my life pretty much as a teacher, and it wasn't until I got to the close to being the end of my teaching career that I decided, oh wow, that's I need to do something that's just really fun. You know, I tried a lot of different hobbies, and uh, one of my wife's friends had you know she was a teacher as well and been uh, a potter for at that point I think five or so years. Okay. And then um, she was going to have a show. Her name's Becky. Becky Dunn. She works out of clay mix here in Fresno. But um, anyway, Becky was going to have a show, so my wife kept saying, well, we need to go see Becky's work. And uh, I went and saw her stuff, and I thought, oh, wow, I really do like the way it looks. But it wasn't so much Becky or the clay that grabbed me as much as it was her mentor, this crazy guy with a wild head of white hair, Craig uh, Craig Easter. Okay. And when I met Craig, I'm like, I'm in. I don't know what this guy teaches. I don't know what he does except clay. But I, I wanted to be in a class with him because he was really funny. He just had one of those magnetic personalities that she just had to get to know. Yeah. He's like, he's like a big brother, uh, a bear, um, Jesus, uh, horribly a bombastic big tease you till it hurts kind of personality and I thought yeah this this is the guy I want to know guy. better and so you you found out that he he taught one of the ceramic classes yeah he was um, at that point I think he was teaching a Tuesday night and a Wednesday night and there was an opening in the Wednesday night so that's where Becky was and you know then I got to be part of the group from God from that point until roughly well, recently that I, I decided to go out pretty much on my own. Very nice. That, uh, I was there with all of them, and then, you know, so it was, it was awesome, awesome and amazing. Yes, and so. so you've kind of developed your own little style there. Yeah, I think you do that after a while. And uh, when I was, before I was actually going there, you know, I, I knew I was going to have some challenges that uh, would maybe make my pottery thrown a little more unique perhaps than others because I, ha I have Parkinson's right mm -hmm. and so for me to be able to um, to work with the pieces uh, you know and to cut them and to shape them and whatever I knew um, that I needed somebody who was gonna you know I didn't mind being teased I, I, I was like okay I'm over the um, the whole oh, pity me kind of stuff it, I didn't feel that way at all it was a matter of okay well, if I can't do this and I've tried it repeatedly, then at that point I need to be able to be um, comfortable enough to say, hey, Craig, or hey, Becky, or, you know, I, I need a hand here. And so it was me being able to let go of the idea that I have to be able to do everything myself, and I have to do everything perfectly, 
and then being able to admit that sometimes you just need help. So when you ended up asking for help, what was it that you learned in that class with your with the other people helping you? Oh wow, that's it's a tough question. Um, I think one of the the best for me, the the most important thing for me was that people were not going to judge me in a way that made me, um, I guess, less than you know, yes. because because um, uh, as a well, I'd say probably more men maybe deal with this, or at least I'll, I'll say men of my generation anyway, mm -hmm. deal with the idea that, okay, if you have to ask for help, you're weak in specific areas, you're not as, you know, as a, oh, God, that sounds horrible, but the truth of it is, you know, I'm, I'm 66, and guys of my age tend to not want to ask help for most anything. Right. And so for me to be able to put myself in a position to, to be not only a, a learner again, but also to be a learner with um, uh, a disability. It, it, I guess it gave me a greater sense of what my students would feel because I always felt like I encouraged my kids to take really big risks in my class. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it, it was tough for me to be able to flip that around and let myself be the student and let, my, let me as a person be nurtured rather than... Um, having to be the guy who had all the information and could basically chuck a knowledge bomb into a kid's head. So it was like, it was just very humbling and very, uh, it, it just made me very, very thankful to have people who were willing to accept me and love me and, and nurture me while I grew up, you know, in my own skill set. Very nice. And so when they started working on your 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 work was it hard to watch them kind of take over or did you notice that they were kind of adapting to your style as they were working on it Ooh, Ooh a really good question too are you related Oprah <laughs> <laughs> man right right I'm telling you whatever you mean paid you, know, you, you need to up your salary that was a great question the, the thing for me was um, I think an awareness that that they were watching me struggle with learning to do what I needed to do, you know, like with throwing a piece or learning how to how to pull the clay from the bottom, you know, around the base of the clay to actually being able to pull it up the side. I think was uh, I I think that was one of the most interesting parts altogether because they wanted me to struggle. They knew that I, in order to learn, right, there's a war that goes on between what you do know and what you need to know, right? There's this, uh, this part that's frustration before it becomes, you know, like a, a muscle memory. Mm -hmm. There's a long, long way to go from, from, from actually uh, working with clay and throwing it down on a, on a bat, which is, you know, basically where you put your clay so you can work with it on this big ceramic wheel. But from taking this clay and, and putting it in place to be able to uh, to actually start to center it and then pull it up so you can make a vessel out of it. So neither Craig nor anybody wanted to just jump in and rescue me. Yes. <laughs> you know, which I think sometimes people want to do. You know, they don't want people to struggle a whole lot right. because then they get really weary um, and, and then feel like, oh, I see, we probably can't say bad things on this station, but, but um, like I was, you know, at times I've been so discouraged. Like I, I just didn't think I would be able to, to overcome my own inadequacies. Mm -hmm. You know, would I be able to learn this? Because there were times I thought, I just don't have the skill set. I am just not going to be able to develop this, and uh, I probably don't really belong here. And uh, I, re I remember a couple times, feeling so discouraged that I said, I'm done. I just don't think I can do this. And I would be gone for a couple days, and you know the class was only one night a week. It was a Wednesday. Yeah. So I would be, you know, when I leave that night, I would like, boy, I just don't know. And I'd be away for a little while and think, okay, well, maybe I just need to go try it one more time. And I would, 
you know, um, I, I was frustrated at times because I think I wasn't the one that was whining for the help. I wasn't the one who, you know, I wanted the help, but they were not going to just jump in and do this for me. It was something that they had to let me struggle to find my own voice, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and, and I think, um, geez, Craig was the only other guy in the class, and he was the teacher, right? Yes. So for him to be able to, to watch me struggle enough to kind of, um, so it's like, okay, time out. Uh, 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 I need a hand here. I need your help. Then at that point, he was willing to, um, to jump in. And I, I think that it was as hard for him to figure out when to help me as it was for me to figure out when to ask. Yes. So I guess I said all that to say there wasn't an easy way for either of us to to admit that one needed help and the other one needed to provide it. Yes. So it was, uh, I knew Craig was watching and I knew he could see me struggling because he just had that, that ability to kind of read people. Yes. So it just it just kind of took place over time. Yes. So he probably wanted to wait for you to ask for help and he probably, in his mind, he probably wanted to help you but he wanted you to ask for help and so it probably was a little lingo there. Yeah. <laughs> so, um... There was no shorthand initially. Yeah. <laughs> It was a lengthy process for yes. us to get to that place. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, um, so you have some beautiful pieces here. Do you mind if I hold them up and show them? No, of course. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. Of course. So I have right here. It's a beautiful bowl. If we can, let's see if we can hold it up and zoom in a little bit. It's got a lot of texture to it. Well, the texture, let's talk about the yeah, texture for talks, a bit. Let's okay. Talk about the texture. Yeah, so the texture, one of the things I really love to do with the pieces, um, if you don't mind, okay, was, is basically almost anything that you find, anything that you can find from a, you know, a, an ice cream scoop okay. to uh, like a, a ravioli cutter, you know, anything that really you would like to use, you can really make patterns out of those guys. In fact, on the video that I shot, I used um, an ice cream scoop okay. spoon. You know, just you know, you little by the little ice cream, you know, and there they come this little wooden spoon in mm -hmm. there. Sometimes it was a little Sunday, and basically it's just a matter of of just um, you get an idea in your head, and then as things go, you just kind of try stuff out. So this was a matter of using. Um, this little—I don't know if you can see this little pattern where it kind of zigzags back and forth. I do. That was using a ravioli uh, seam uh, press, and then the next one was this little guy. You see how it has these kind of up and down little smashy holes, you yes. know? Okay, they uh, look like—I don't know—like little thumb divots. Well, basically, I used a uh, um, a pie crimper. Okay. you know for that so it's a little type of a wheel that goes around there and then all the way around the edges and if you can see that that piece right there yes um so i i found uh that particular tool in um in uh, san jose which basically i really don't know what it was but it was a weird looking little thing and i knew if i rolled it along it was gonna look awesome <laughs> it was gonna yeah it was gonna, it's gonna do something gonna different awesome. right yeah. so Anyway, it's just a matter of finding something that you like and thinking, oh, I think I want to give that a go. Yes. And so the, the patterns, you know, the colors, the colors, um, you can see basically I brush the colors on first and then I use the little tools to basically become part of that. And um, I don't like to do the fronts and the back the same, so when somebody looks at the front of something, uh, in terms of my pieces anyway, I encourage them to look at the back because there's something different on the back that they may really decide they like altogether and then something, you know, that maybe they don't like at all. Yes, I was noticing the back too. Yeah, it's very beautiful. <laughs> Thanks. Very beautiful. Thank you. Okay, and then what do we have here? Well, this particular piece, okay, so again, if you, you basically can take almost anything you want to and make a uh, design with it. You know, I know if you've had fountain pens, you know, those old, you know, fountain pens that have, you know, just like a, 
you know, you don't want to buy the ink for it anymore or whatever. Right. Anyway, I took a fountain pen nib, and you see these little slits here yes. that are, yeah. So I used a fountain pen nib to basically um, poke holes vertically in there, so it would just kind of do something interesting. And then as far as the little, the designs, I basically just did the designs with, um, oh shoot, shish kebab sticks. Okay. You know, and that's basically how I ended up with the hearts. And uh, I just thought, well, let's try something different. I, I think if you stop trying things as a potter, you kind of really stop learning. Right. You know, and then the textures, I mean, as you look at the finish, see this one's really bright. The first one we looked at, the finish is really, really clear. And this one is a little more matte. It looks a little frosty-ish, right? Mm -hmm. And so in this other piece, basically, is a completely matte piece so and uh, you can tell it's just as you look at it it really looks kind of grayish right. but it's because of the the matte finish that makes it kind of um, opaque white looking yes. so and then this one has this one has an actual base on it so I think that's pretty cool right there it's got the base and then it's got the bowl on top yeah, so this one, you, if you look at this, and I don't know if you can really even look closely at the sides of it, but, but again, you know, I use just different kinds of, uh, of tools. This particular, the larger holes around here on the bottom, see these guys right there, um, I used um, a, a part of a, geez, it was like uh, from a flooring where you actually shoot like a 22 caliper, um, um, some kind of a, anchor into the ground, you okay. know, <laughs> yeah. and they're attached to like this little stick of, uh, of shells, you know, that are like uh, blasting caps, really. Yeah. And so after I shot some of those in the ground, I thought, ooh, I like the way this looks. Yes. So I basically just started, you know, basically making holes and designs in the side. And then these other things that look more like a checkerboard in the layer above it are, you know, this particular piece there. It was a matter of finding um, a sculpting tool that I really liked the way it looked, you know, kind mm -hmm. of, again, like a checkerboard. And then this part above that is uh, basically a cake decorating tool. Okay. And then uh, this is just using uh, just a sharp stick, you know, to get it there. And this particular piece is just, uh, actually it's an inverted fruit, um, fruit bowl. So instead of having the fruit bowl go outward like so, uh, I just thought, okay, let's just take it instead of having it laying over like so, you know, like these do, like a shallow bowl form. Well, let's see what we can do to just basically invert that form and have it so that the fruit would stick inside there and, you know, be a different look altogether. Yeah, it's so, beautiful. Thanks. And so yeah. then we have, we have a YouTube video. If we could go ahead and see if we could pull that up. Hey everybody, my name is Hal Rains and I'm a potter and I love being able to work in clay. I do have a couple things that make me a little more, um, I guess, um, different than others, I guess, and that I have Parkinson's and it makes it a little tough to work with the clay in a, in a conventional manner, but it also makes my work unique. So as I go through a few things with you, just want to kind of keep that in mind. As you see the trimmers, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal to me. At this point, it's just part of life. So okay. Just open the clay up. Um, some people use two fingers. Some people use a sponge and a finger. It's just kind of determined by how much clay you've actually got you're working with. So I'm opening up the clay using a finger with the sponge to give me some moisture. One thing you gotta do pretty much always every time unless you've been throwing forever. And uh, so you basically use a needle tool to check the depth of it. And so I've got about three eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna say that's pretty good. I'm gonna thin it just a little bit more. And I'm working the bottom go back and forth to compress it otherwise building it with cracks. So what I'm doing at this point is using the sponge to give me compression on this side and then the fingers inside there to uh, kind of give me um, the opportunity to pinch the clay together so it will rise up. Okay, so I'm gonna lay this down a little bit more because I really want kind of a bowl shape. So I'm just um, 
Gosh, I gotta get that sponge out of the way so you can see. Okay, and I do have Parkinson's, so sometimes my hands will shake a lot, and I have to put some more medicine in my body. But for the most part, it's okay. My designs um, kind of reflect, they have this kind of lumpiness about it, and that's okay. I think they're, you know, more unique, because obviously it's, when you throw, it's really a reflection of what your skill set is, what you desire, what you design. Okay, so I like the little swirl in there, but I'll use the plastic rib. And see, yeah, this there are two different shapes, really. So I'm, I want to smooth the bottom out at this point, so I'm just going to take this rib here. And again, I'm going to compress outside as I compress inside. And try to get that wobble out by bringing that up, taking the, some of the glop off from the inside. So... I like it so far. Um, I'm going to just bring this in at the bottom on the outside because it's, the bottom is chubby. So I'm working at thinning this out and bringing this up. You can see the bowl starting to get more scooped in the middle, which is good. That's what I hope to do. Okay. So you can see that's a nice bowl shape. Again, like I did before. And I'm just gonna smooth that edge off. It's a little resistant to moving much because the edge is a little bit drier than it was. And again, the brush I just made from um, chopping up a uh, whisk broom and using zip ties and then just covering the zip ties pretty much with some green electro electrician's tape. So I'm just spreading this out much like I did last time. Go back here and grab some of that and brush it up. And I like it to spin kind of suspended so when I put a bunch on I don't like it to run all together. So I like it to be fast enough that it'll pretty much stay in the place where it lands unless I purposefully spread it. So I'm going to take this and go over the outside as well. to just give it a little accent around the edges so I'm gonna bounce it a little okay you see the difference hang on just a minute and you will okay so that's the difference it's a, just a different look altogether
welcome back. I've got Hal Rains here. He's going to continue talking about his pottery. And so he wanted to share with us about his firing times. Um, after he makes these beautiful pieces, I wanted to know how much firing time does it take for something like what you were working on in the YouTube video? Okay, well, there, there are several different ways of uh, firing, you know, I mean, uh, this is in no way an exhaustive look at what, you know, what fire, firing is because there can, things can be done in wood firing, which takes sometimes four days. Oh, okay. Which are really cool, but, uh, you know, that's another story. So. Basically, I've used, uh, with these guys, pretty much everything is an electric kiln. Uh, right, you know? okay. And there's a single firing, and then there's a double firing, you know, which you're probably familiar with the term bisque firing. Yes. Okay, so bisque is basically, it, it literally comes from the word bisque, as in like a biscuit. Oh, okay, okay. Because <laughs> that's what it feels like, right? Yes. So there's a, it's a matter of basically taking the water out of the clay body itself. Okay. And then actually pushing it out at... Uh, at a point where all the molecular water is gone too, and that's where the clay starts to fuse into uh, just a, a vitrified piece of of clay that you know can hold water without anything leaking through it at all. So, and that a bisque is basically just that. It's just allowing you to take a piece and to push all the the chemical water out of it, and to be able to put it in a place where it can go through a relatively quick fire to take a glaze and then become a usable piece. Okay. Like so, um, and I, it depends on, on what it is that I'm gonna do with the piece. Like something has a lot of carving on it, like the piece that we talked about earlier. Yes. Um, those typically I fire at a bisque, you know, so then I can, I can decide what to do with the, the, the pieces, the, the depth of the, the carvings, you know. Um, as if you just, if you take a piece that's really heavily carved and you just do a single firing, that means you're going to put the glazing on top of it and then just one long fire. Um, a lot of times those pieces don't make it through. So if you do a lot of carving, a lot of work on your on your clay body itself, um, then you need a biscuit and then basically take it all the way up so it'll go through the glazing. And uh, there are just so many things to do, so many things to learn, which is a great thing. I've been a in pottery if I think about five and a half years. Very nice. And um, there's always workshops to take. There are always things to, to do. To learn. Yeah. So. yeah. so how long, if you don't mind me asking, how long did this one take to fire? This one was um, a matter of, let me see. This one was about an eight hour, just a plain old, let me see the clay body on this. This is actually, uh, porcelain. So this would have been somewhere around eight and a half, nine hours. Wow. And Wonder then that was, yeah, that was the bisking. So beautiful. Thank you. And then, I'm sorry, I keep kicking <laughs> you with my feet. And then basically when I went back through, you know, it just was a matter of a uh, dunk, you know, in the, in the glaze. And then, the, you know, probably somewhere about the same amount of time. Okay. So. And so do you do the electric kiln or do you do the wood kiln? I do the electric kiln. Okay. Yeah, I have a, a Scott. Yay, Scott! You know, there's <laughs> like every potter has their favorite kiln, okay? And so mine happens to be a Scott kiln, and uh, no offense, the other potters. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, of I'll course. take a Scott. Okay. So. Very nice. It's like having a Harley or a Honda. Yes. Uh, okay, so. Yes. The Everybody Scott has is their, my, their favorite. Yeah. I, I've so. driven like five Hyundais, so I guess those are my favorite cars. <laughs> Yeah, um, but yeah, I, I get what you say. So um, and then so like these pieces, um, they would not take the same as a piece like this, correct? Well, they could. You know, again, there's these are not really heavy, heavily carved. Some of the stuff that I I work with, um, the carving goes literally more than halfway through okay. the piece. So okay. those are the pieces that I would do with just a very long, slow fire. Okay. You know, and then um, then go with you know with the uh, the bisque first, and then go with the glazing second. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. simply because if I, I I would be concerned if I put glazes on something that wasn't um, initially you know very solid that the that the the molecular water has been pushed out already. Okay. That it would cause it to swell up and they would expand too quickly when you 
fire okay. them. Okay, so, so it would be at like a different temperature yeah, then? Yeah. Okay, I And I different understand. length of firing. I, yeah. I don't understand, understand, but I, I understand what you're saying. Yay. <laughs> Now classes, okay, so we can talk about classes for a few minutes. Yes, There are definitely. a couple, oh, thank you. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm running over you. No, There are a couple all. places that I think are really great. If you live in Madeira, would you like to, you know, have a, like a one-on-one -on -one session or period of, of time? I do have two wheels at home, and I have a buddy around the corner. He and I basically uh, work and teach kids, you know, and uh, we work together. We've been friends forever. And uh, Larry Latimer, love you, buddy. His mm -hmm. wife teaches drama at Madeira High at okay. South Campus. And um, so if you would like to reach me, you're welcome to leave um, a, a message at my uh, studio phone. It's 559-673-6504. You can also reach me on Instagram at Hal Rains Pottery. Um, I have a website, halrainspottery.com. And um, geez, you know, if you're interested in pottery, gosh, there are a lot of places to be able to to um, to be able to get into clay and make that part of your your hobby and your fun and your life. So. And you're also selling some of your items. Oh right, I, I am. Yes. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yes, yes, you are. <laughs> with COVID, I know. Sorry, with COVID stuff going on, there really so many places are not open right now, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But you know, you can always reach me online. Um, I am um, Hal Rain's Facebook, you know, so, you know, you can reach me there. But again, Instagram, it's just Hal Rain's Pottery, and webpage, HalRainsPottery.com. So, um, classes, um, geez, call. Yeah. I'd love to talk to you. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on, and I look forward to having you again. And um, we've gotten to learn a lot today. We've gotten to see some great pieces. And I just look forward to having you on again. Thanks. Thank you so much. And that will be all we have for to e this evening. <laughs> Good night. Thank you.